Hello traders, Rich here and welcome to a new episode on how to analyze any chart from scratch without using any indicators, just by applying basic price action concepts and max structure 101. So let's get started and as usual, cheers. Today we have episode number 29, which is a Forex pair USDCHF. If you aren't familiar with the series, don't worry, I'll make sure to attach the entire playlist, which includes all the videos by order in the description below. And I also attach my Telegram channel where I forward my videos and posts from YouTube and TradingView in case you want to get notified. So let's do it. We always start from the higher time frames, weekly and daily, which we call our rejection time frames. And half of the work is done there. So half of the work is done when we find where we are in the market. Like let's say we're around a support area, and then we zoom into lower time frames to look for setups around this support. Okay, so 50% here and 50% here. So how do we know we're in the market? We've got three market conditions. First one is a classic range. And of course, as price approaches, the upper band will be looking for size setups, which is our horizontal resistance. As price approaches, the lower band will be looking for buy setups until eventually this range is broken upward or downward. The second type is if price is like bullish. Right? As price approaches, the lower band will be looking for trend following by setups. And as price approaches, the upper band, which I also consider uh, an overbought area, will be looking for such setups. Vice versa, in case of a bearish trend, as price approaches, the lower band, which I consider an oversold area, will be looking for buy setups. And as price approaches, the upper band or the non horizontal resistance will be looking for trend following such setups. So let's do just that on USDCHF. We have three types of rejections. A typical horizontal supply and resistance where we see many failed attempts to break above a certain level or area. It's not a laser level. Keep in mind that, that it's an entire area, so we should treat it like this, for example. And for the buyers to take over, we need to see an aggressive with multiple big bullish candles breaking above it for it to become a support. And then we'll be looking for power on the retest. As long as price is sitting around it or inside it, we are only looking for set setups. That's our first type of rejection where we have many failed attempts to break above or below a certain area. The second type is a supply and demand zone. For example, we've got a demand zone here because we have an aggressive movement upward from it. In this case, as price approaches this demand zone again, we'll be looking for buy setups. Vice versa, we've got a supply zone, for example, here, as we had an aggressive movement down from it, and as price approaches it again, we'll be looking for sell setups. We also had a supply zone here, also had one here, we'll be looking for sell here, and we'll be looking for sell here. Here's a supply zone, we'll be looking for sell, right? Here we've got a demand zone, we'll be looking for buy. Okay, you've got the idea. The third type is a non-horizontal supply and resistance, also known as trend lines. Right, so let's say price is bullish, trading inside like this wedge pattern. Here we go. So as price approaches the lower bound, let me draw it, we'll be looking for buy, looking for buy, until eventually, of course, it's broken down, then it becomes a resistance and so on. As price approaches, so one, two, we're looking for sell, looking for sell, and so on. Okay, so let's apply the, these three types on USDCHF. Let's start with our supply and resistance. The way to do it is very simple. You simply draw a random line on your chart and drag and drop it in a way to connect as many swings as possible. And the bigger the swing that connects, uh, that, that, that this trend line connects, the stronger that the, the, sorry, not trend line, the horizontal support connects, the stronger it becomes, right? That's one. Second, what I, what I do as for my trading plan, I always go for three rejections. For example, one, two, and three to consider it a typical supply and resistance. And I call it a support and resistance because it can be formed with two highs and one low, right? Or two lows and one high. That's why I call it a support and resistance. And of course, it can be formed with three highs or three lows, okay? Let's delete these ones, click on save, that's it, okay? So we draw, draw another one on our chart and drag and drop it in a way to connect as many swings as possible. For example, we can see an obvious one here, which we did previously in our example. Let's go for uh, 1.025. And if we continue, we can also find one here, right? Multiple rejections from it. So one, two, three, even four, and so on. 
right? And these two typical supply and resistance forms a big support and resistance zone. So as price dives inside it, we're only interested in looking for sell setups and we won't be looking for buy setups because now price is around what? The upper bound. Okay, that's our first one. Let's now go for blue and scroll lower. So we, we go lower and lower. And anyway, like I, I'm not spend more time. I, I've like I've previously did it in many previous examples. So you can check it out on my YouTube channel. But for now, let's make it quicker because we've got many, many stuff to cover. So we've got one here because we've got many, many rejections from it. You can see it. So one, two, three even four, and then price broke it downward. It's now acting as a resistance area. As price approaches, it will be looking for set setups. And we also got, if you make an offset for it, we also got one here. So it's an entire zone as usual. It's not a laser level, right? So as price is above this area, we'll be looking for buy. And as price is below it, we'll be looking for sell. So it's obviously now acting as a resistance area. I always like to see it as a round number. So let's go for nine five. And for this one, for nine five five next let's go for green this time style fantastic so for this one we also got what here we go it's, it's a very obvious one we've got many clean dejections from it here here it was acting as a resistance previously support support and so on and then price broke it downward it's acting as a resistance now price broke it upward so it's acting as a support area of course again and again it's an entire zone so let's make an offset for it to cover these wicks here and that's it we'll cover this one this one and here we go and also these ones and it's also what it's also a round number so if we go for 0 0.9 that's it of course like now it got like a little bit like lower but but anyway let's let's stick to zero five here we go so for it, for it to be relevant to the current price action and let's go for nine five let's see if it got lower okay fantastic so for now this zone is acting as a support area unless it's broken downward then it would become a resistance again and we'll be looking for sell on the retest now let's go for blue that's it and here we go we also got many many rejections from this area support here 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 and here as well okay so let's keep it around 89 uh, sorry 87 5. that's it so now we're done with our supply and resistance Next, let's go for supply and demand zones, right? So we've got a demand area here, which is already got filled as the, we go price already retested it and traded higher from it. As mentioned previously at the start, we had a supply zone here, if you can see it, an aggressive movement down and already got filled. So I don't like to draw a, a supply and a demand zone, which is already got filled because I want to keep it as clean as possible. Okay, next, so we don't have any, uh, any like uh, uh, unfilled su uh, supply and demand zones, right? We've got this one filled, this one filled, and so on. Next, now we'll zoom in and we try to draw our non-horizontal supply resistance. We want to get a feeling about the overall movement. So we want to find what I call the upper bound and the lower bound, or what I also call the outer trend line, okay, which, is, which engulfs the overall movement and if, if it is upward or downward in this case we can see that price is stuck inside a big consolidation and price keeps on making lower highs and high lows right so it's stuck inside forming a giant symmetrical triangle okay this is how you can get a feeling about the market previously price was stuck inside this kind of, of a bullish trend which is a watch pattern which we took an example previously about it Right, so now we know that we are inside this big because we are on form weekly. This this big symmetrical triangle. We can also draw like like this, or we can also go for the recent highs and lows. So for for the long term perspective, is is trading inside this giant symmetrical triangle. And from a shorter term perspective, if we zoom in a little bit, we can see that it's trading inside this rising channel. We can go for this one and here we go right so 
it's going upward. However, it's approaching the upper band of the symmetric triangle. And anyway, I'm not drawing this in the symmetric triangle because also to keep it clean, I'm not draw this one because we already have also the support area. Okay, that's how you can keep it as clean as possible. But you know that we also got uh, like multiple rejection zones. So long story short, just for me, key time frame, look at, at, at like how clean the chart now uh, becomes. Uh, just for me, key, a support area now stuck inside a big range and inside this big range lately for the latest price action, price is stuck inside a horizontal range, right? So up, down, up, down. So as price approaches the lower band, obviously we'll be looking for buy setups unless we've got a big aggressive break below the zone, which would also be a break below the previous lows. So after this break, we can say that the bears won this battle, right? And and like if if, if, if it's many battles, then then the bears won this war, right? And now they are full control. And as price retests the previous highs, sorry, the previous lows here, we'll be looking for such setups, which would also be the price breaking or the bears breaking below this horizontal support. And the retest will it becomes a resistance, and we'll be looking for sell on the retest. But meanwhile, and until the cells take over by breaking below like the 0 0.905, uh, we are overall bullish. And chances are uh, that the price or the bulls will kick in and trade higher because this is where we are trading now. We can see it better from daily time frame, right? So we are overall bullish trading inside this rising channel. Let me make an offset for it. You know what? Let me make it in brown. That's it. And here we go. So we are now overall bullish trading inside this area, but like it's kind of a flat uh, ri rising uh, uh, channel. So it's like a horizontal range. But you've got the idea. As price approaches, this lower band will be looking for buy setups. So we can even see it better. We were overall bullish here inside this rising one. Then the sellers took over. Then the buyers took over here. Then the sellers or the bears kicked in and they jacked this previous high and trade it lower and the buyers took over here right and now the, the we, are, we are having a retest like this right so that's why we are looking for buy setups unless again and again as i mentioned from weekly time frame we would have an aggressive break below it then we'll be looking for sell here on the retest so this is where we are in the market now we are done with our rejection zones or rejection time frames let's zoom into lower time frames and look for buy setups the first time frame is that we zoom in is H4. Let me make them appear on H4 first. That's it. Okay, if we zoom into H4, we can, for now, so now we are looking for a bullish reversal setup, right? Because we are approaching a support area, knowing that price can still dive lower and lower before trading higher. So you don't want to buy blindly, even though you are around a support area, because price can still dive inside it because it's an entire zone or even break it downward, okay? That's why we always look for extra confirmation and trigger. For, for example, this is a possible one. Of course, it's still possible because it's still forming. We've got this trend line now forming, right? So we were overall bullish. Now we are overall bearish. We've got our first high a lower high. We've got a low here maybe would have another lower low, right? So we are still overall bearish. Then we'll be waiting for the buyers to kick in. That's it. So let me adjust it to kick in. For example, we've got another low. Then we'll be waiting for it to, a new swing high to form around the upper trend line to consider it for the tsunami a trigger swing, right? So for those who already know me, I, I always highlight it like this. Then, and only then we'll be buying as the SHF. So the setup is still forming, okay? And as for my trading plan, I'll be waiting for this to happen. We are overall bullish, right? Inside this rising, flat rising uh, brown channel and approaching a support area, which is a horizontal one found from weekly, waiting for the buyers to kick in again so that the long-term perspective and the short-term perspective would be lined up. Because for now, from a long-term perspective, we are bullish from a short-term perspective, we are bearish, right? So bullish from a long-term perspective, here also bullish from a short-term perspective, but bullish from a long-term perspective, but here we've got a bearish one. You don't want to buy a bearish uh, market, especially 
And like, even though it's from a short-term perspective, we always wait for the buyers to take over. Even like for some traders, consider it a late entry, right? But but like uh, extra confirmation is way better than trying to catch the exact top and bottom. Of course, when the buy is activated, it depends on your trading style and risk management. For, for example, the stop loss would go below the previous low and would target at least a one to two risk to reward ratio to, to have a nudge over the market from uh, from a risk management risk management perspective. From a technical perspective, we have a nudge because we are looking for a buy around the lower bounds, right? If you look for buy inside the channel, the middle of nowhere or around the upper bound, we, we won't be, we, we, we wouldn't have an edge over the market, but we have an edge over the market from a technical perspective because we are looking for buy around the lower band. That's our first edge. Our second edge is through risk management. And meanwhile, as I always say, until the buy is activated, the SDSHF would be overall bearish and can still trade lower and lower, dive inside the support before going upward, or even break the support downward for it to become a resistance. So always remember, trading is reactive and not predictive. So don't try to predict the next move. Just like chess, wait for your opponent to make the first move and then react accordingly. Wait for the market to form a setup and activate it and then we react. Best of luck and I'll see you on the next episode.